What's going on guys? My name is Caleb Strackengas. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. Today's video is going to be about my top three decoy setups for spring turkey. And I'm going to give you some bonus tips and tricks to uh, add into your tool bag. So let's jump on into the video. First morning. First morning. Got him, baby. Whoa. Yes, sir. All right, guys, so let's talk about my three decoy setups that I use for the most part throughout turkey season. My first decoy setup for turkey season is going to be no decoys. When I'm on public and I'm going way back in, if I am in a open field setup where these birds have been called at, they've been hunted, um, they're just not interested in decoys or if I'm in an area where I know I've went after a bird and I've used decoys in the past and it didn't work, those are really gonna be my situations where I don't use a decoy at all, no decoys whatsoever. Now, one thing I have had luck with in the past, uh, if I'm hunting a field situation, I'll get in the woods and call Instead of being in the edge of the field and calling, I'll get back in the woods, I'll locate the birds, I'll figure out kind of where they're wanting to go, and then I'll get back in the woods 20 yards or so, set up and call, and I may put a lone hen or something in that situation back in the woods behind me. But we'll get into that here in a minute. But as far as no decoys, um, that is going to be the safest bet in pretty much all situations. Like if you are going into a situation, you don't know what these turkeys are doing, you want to get in there, maybe kill a turkey, almost like a hunt and scout situation. I would recommend going in no decoy. Uh, that's just what I would recommend. Those are kind of the situations where I wouldn't run a decoy. Now, in the past, I've not ran a decoy a lot of times, and I've kind of progressed into my favorite situation, which I'll get to last in this video. All right, so let's jump into my second decoy strategy for this spring. And this is something that I use kind of here and there, uh, not quite that often. This is probably my least used setup out of the three setups that I'm going to talk about. And that's going to be a maybe two or three, like a small flock of hens, that type of setup. And the reason why I say it's, I use it less than any of the others is because it's, it's not something that I've had a whole lot of success with, but I have had some success in the past. I've had other hens come up. I've had situations where I was able to call a hen into the hen decoys and had a gobbler follow. Um, but I haven't had a whole lot of luck with just pulling a long gobbler in with only hen decoys. Where I would use that would be more of a, if I know there's a bunch of jakes in the area that are just whooping up on the toms and hassling the toms, I'll run a small flock of hen decoys. I only have two personally, but if I'm hunting with a buddy, more often than not, they have decoys as well. I prefer the Avian X decoys to any of them. Uh, I don't have, I think if there's another brand that I would like to try, it would be the Dave Smith decoys. Um, but the Avian X decoys, these are just the, I think they're the LCD. Uh, that's a breeder hen. This is a Dakota's de a Dakota decoys. I don't remember the model. But that's going to be a feeder hen. This is a breeder hen from Avian X. This is the combo that if I'm going to run just hens, this is the combo that I run quite a bit for those situations. I prefer the Avian X to the Dakotas, but that Dakota decoy does just fine. Uh, I like the fact that I like the stakes that come with the Avian X decoys the best because I can fold them up, stick them in my pack, and they're just easy to tote around. Uh, and the turkeys seem to respond pretty well to the shine. The, the Avian X decoys just look really, really good. But like I said, second setup, multiple hens. I don't normally have that much luck with a solo hen. That's why I haven't really talked about that setup. There are situations where you can run that setup. It's just not something that I've had very good luck with. So from that setup, let's go ahead and jump into my third and favorite setup for spring turkey season. 
and that is going to be this half strut uh, gobbler or Jake decoy, whatever you want to call it, from Avian X. This decoy, in the last four, probably the last four or five turkeys, with exception of the very last turkeys that Hunter and I killed last year, the last four or five turkeys that I've either killed or been a part of being killed have been killed over this decoy with no hens. And I think the reason why that decoy setup is so successful is the fact that these gobblers are out here looking for a hen, right? And you're sitting there with a call and you're calling. And you're calling as a hen, right? Well, if that decoy, or if that turkey is 60, 70, 80 yards away, and it hears you calling like a hen, and it sees that hen decoy there, the natural course of things in nature is that hen is gonna go to that gobbler. He's gonna sit there and he's gonna gobble, gobble, gobble. And that hen naturally in nature is going to go to that gobbler. Well, what we're trying to do as hunters is we're trying to reverse nature and we're trying to make that gobbler come into us. So I think why this situation, why this solo half strut decoy is so such a deadly combination or a deadly decoy setup for these gobblers in the spring is they hear you calling as a hen, but they can't see that hen. But they can tell that this Jake decoy is fired up and he's quarter strut or half strut, just raring to go, but they can't see that hen. And I don't know what it does to a tom, but you can see them come in and their heads change. And they'll come in and they will beat the crap out of this decoy, or they will come in and you can tell they're looking, they're trying to find that hen that they know they heard. And it's just enough, like, it's almost like curiosity killed the cat, it seems like to me. Like they see this decoy, but they can't see the hen. And it just intrigues them enough to where they come in. And normally when they come into this decoy, they are coming right now to this decoy. The turkey that Hunter and I killed last spring, the first one we killed together, this decoy is the reason why we killed that bird. So we had a hen and two or two toms coming through the deck, coming back to the roost. But where they were coming through was 60, 70 yards away. I called a few soft calls and they kind of turned our way and they saw this decoy and both those times gobbled and headed our way right to this thing. Uh, the turkey that I killed with my bow the year before last came in just beat the snot out of this decoy. The turkey I killed on public the same year, he came in to fight this decoy. Uh, and like I said, I think it's just something about that solo uh, Jake. It's easy to whoop up on. It's not over intimidating like a full strutter with a big old beard and just a big old decoy. Sometimes they're intimidating to other birds. This is just not a very intimidating decoy, but it's, and it's also big enough and dark enough that they can see this thing from a distance, even in the woods, they can see this thing from a distance. So that is my favorite, without a shadow of a doubt, I love running the half strut Avian X LCD. This, that's just what I've got. I mean, there's other half strut decoys out there. This has just been the favorite that I've had uh, and the one I've had the most luck with. So a couple of other things that I'll leave you with, some key, some just tips and tactics for you for the spring. One, I would say don't call too much, which is pretty self-explanatory. But the next one kind of kind of contradicts that call too much. So I don't want to be confusing in that, but there are situations where no calling is best and there are situations where you need to fire that turkey up. My rule of thumb is if the turkey is looking at me or coming to me, I do not call. If that turkey is facing away from me or blown up, moving around, I'll give some soft clucks, some small, just light, light calls, just to try to get that, keep that turkey interested. But if I have a turkey that's gobbling, even if I can't see this turkey, if they gobble and gobble and gobble and they're fired up and it seems like they're moving my way, my rule of thumb is to call less. If that turkey is hung up at a distance, you're gonna sit there, and if you sit there and just keep calling, if they're hung up and they're not moving, but they're gobbling back and forth, they're where they wanna be and they want you to come to them. So something that I've had luck with in the past is if I can, if that turkey can't see me, I will actually move back, almost like an elk, elk hunting situation. I'll actually move back, call, rustle the leaves, scratch around, and then I will come back up to where, I've been, where I was sitting and I'll sit there and I won't make another sound. What I've had luck with in the past is a turkey hears me in the morning or midday or whatever it is, they know that I'm there. I move back and I call. 
and then I get back where I was, I'll sit there and not make a sound and eventually that tom will make his rounds. Maybe not 100% of the time, but a lot of times they'll make their rounds and they'll end up right on top of you. And that is my third and probably most important, the, most, the way that I've killed the most birds is calling and hunting all day. I'll call, I'll call if I don't hear anything and I know I'm in a good spot. If I know I'm where there's turkey sign, if, I'm no, if I know where, I'm, where, I, where it makes sense for turkeys to be at some point in the day, or if I know that I've heard turkeys there in the past or I heard one that morning or spooked one that morning, whatever it is, I will set up there and I will hunt all day. And it's long and it's grueling and it's hard to sit there in the heat and not hearing turkeys gobbling but I have killed multiple birds where they gobbled at me in the morning or I didn't hear anything at all, all day. And I called, cold called, almost like an elk scenario. I'll cold call here and there, 20, 30 minutes. I'll cold call, scratch the leaves, move around a little bit and set back down. And it's normally when I've been sitting there for three or four, five, six hours after I called last and a bird will either fire off or they'll end up in my lap. So just be in a good situation. Last year, two years ago, I took a nap in the woods. I woke up to a turkey gobbling 150 yards away and he came right in and shot that turkey at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Just put yourself in a situation. Don't leave the woods too early. If you're in a state where you can hunt all day, hunt all day, guys, because that is when I've killed the most turkeys is doing that situation. Favorite decoy setup is definitely this Tom. And then, like I said, multiple hens is something I don't run all that often. And then no decoy at all is another one that I run quite a bit. So hopefully you got something out of this. This is my top three decoy setups for this spring, as well as some tips and tricks to add into your tool belt to kill some turkeys this spring. If you got any decoy setup, setups that you guys like to run, comment down below and let me know what you run. I'm all about learning. I'm by no means a professional turkey hunter. I'm very novice uh, at this. And I'm all about learning more scenarios and more decoy setups and just learning in general about hunting. So if you have anything different or something that you like to run, some scenarios that you like, some decoy setups that you like to run, comment down below, guys. Let me know. I would love to try something different. If you have a favorite decoy brand, comment down below and let me know what your favorite decoy brand is. I like the Avian X is the best out of what I've ran, but if there's something out there that I can afford to run, I like to run the best equipment that I can. So thanks guys, I appreciate you watching. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. Good luck out there this spring. We'll catch you on the next one.